Art forms from the beginning of time have all withheld the similar motives that are continuing to be shown in our everyday lives. To preserve, to educate, to influence or inspire, and last but not least, to escape. And as art over the years has developed from being a higher class commodity to being a daily reminder of man-made innovations, it has indeed become a large part of human culture and more accessible to a multitude of people who have their varied perspectives of viewing the world. Because modern technology and established pieces of utilizing creativity are so common, many are engaging into the literal experiencing of art itself, and escapism through such art. Well, we may understand how people escape reality to fantasy, with entertainment and curiosity being so prominent in the world. The portal of imagination is just as easy to tap into as it is to talk to a stuffed elephant all alone in your room whilst making a video. But gently putting that thought aside, Merriam-Webster defines the term escapism as a habitual diversion of the mind to purely imaginative activity or entertainment as an escape from reality or routine. With that in mind, escapism could also be highly addictive and an obsessive remedy to alleviating everyday problems. But while we may be reminded of mainstream media or miscellaneous necessities, which are accessible through tech variability, there are actually more slightly unconventional, more tangible arts that may physically surround you as well. Toys, collectibles, and stuffed animals offer that similar escape. In this case, giving a sense of comfort and security. When you need someone by your side in the middle of the night. When you need a friend. When you're exploring unlimited ideas with the toolbox or toy box you have. Having these caricatures possess their own identities or even be alterations of already established backstories make for an intimate experience between object and owner. Showing that anything according to the individual's mindset who owns such toys is possible. There's a sense of nostalgia when toys are topical to narrative. The idea of collecting sentimental items is also something developed in the human consciousness with various objects. And there are plenty of examples as to what people specify their interests in. This is the sort of discussion individuals in psychology have covered intensely, to a point where you don't find it all that necessary to differentiate the held value in items or the hoarding for a sense of control slash attachment. And I personally don't think I am necessarily the right person to talk about this topic in its entirety, so let's just look at some other examples. Theme parks. Now companies are infamous for selling merchandise. It helps popularize the properties of brands that are distributed under them. Theme parks are places where such items as toys and souvenirs could be highly accumulated, especially if they're more exclusive to the place. Moreover, theme parks are rich in fantasy and wonder. Especially in Disney parks, for example, the theming and diversity of amusements is vital to successfully achieve the whole experience. It allows the fantasy world to have a more universal and timeless appeal that someone won't find at a park primarily for thrills or for a carnival feel, whether it be an intellectual property or an original ride, or a mixture of both. All of it's based on an imaginative perspective of many people who want to ensure that experience is fantastically dissimilar to the outside world. There's a sense of surrealism when you are physically a part of what's presented, when you see certain characters given life, when stories on paper become three-dimensional in real time, when you travel on a safari and then find yourself on an adventurous flight, when you are transported to countries without the need of a passport, when put into many circumstances beyond your wildest dreams. It's truly magical. And theme parks are prime examples as to how to make escapism coexist with reality. Stores and restaurants and other attractions of sorts have taken on this theming as well with likely intentions for their own properties. Haunted houses take you into a tight-knit walkthrough as you were in a horror film or in an uncomfortable place solely haunted by terror and fright. Restaurants such as Rainforest Cafe allow for a close-up engagement to the tropical rainforest as you dine beside animatronic animals that are awakened by Mother Nature's changing climate. In situations like that, you're put into the position of the perspective of what's around you. Except there's no need to read up on how to survive such epidemics, per se. Luau's and other places such as medieval times enable the audience member to engage in a show that's put on a more personal level than an average Broadway production. In these shows, you enjoy a lavish feast as hired individuals perform a rehearsed production right before your eyes. Or you can just interact with certain characters while doing so. 
even with hotels, as well as in other resorts in this manner that are around vacation spots, give the same allusion to their subject matter quite nicely and establish great places to stay. Local destinations that have existed or are still around today carry that illusion too. Although not every toy store could look like the Toys R Us in Times Square, the concept of going into a place surrounded by certain aesthetics still holds up in the product and business designs of many companies. Franchises, small businesses, clothing, mall chains, DVD sellers, well, before the digital epidemic took over, and much more. Even though some places may seem like errand completing, they do in fact hold up in the same category. Landmarks in nature, or landmarks in nature, and museums are also great additions to this conversation. Landmarks offer tourists historical context as to how some places came to be historically charming, whether it be a monument that has survived for centuries or gorgeous national park or zoo, along those lines that offer great never-before opportunities. Museums give great background on creators, historical relics, cultural and biological orientations, infamous moments captured through shown documentaries that complement the piece beside them, and the immense information shown to the public domain through descriptions and analytics. Although museums are more educational, many have focused on having one-on-one -on -one experiences that take away the reality of what's brought forward, primarily through special exhibits. Regardless of what it is, escapism is centered around the idea that you're immersed into otherworldly destinations, and that's clarified in different ways for different people based on different perspectives and what they've been exposed to. Additionally, when discussing why escapism perhaps exists, many of the reasons are valued amongst the majority. Escapism is influenced by the desire for further understanding and the sharing of creativity, whether intellectually or fantastically. It therefore develops individuality, whether through keen interest, developed throughout one's life, or developed through the making of such art. The art developed continues world building and storytelling. It offers new perspectives, opinions, values, customs, and ideals to transcend to a mainstream point of view. That's especially valid when accounting for the multitude of people applying this through social media or through secret diaries. The uses of these are fun in their own ways, because life is tough. America is surrounded by the concept of the pursuit of happiness, and that quote is applied on an international scale for many people. No matter what one may encounter or struggle with, that means of escape is open to anyone needing that immediate gratification of security and embracement of capability through imagination itself. In truth, escapism exists because humans exist. And if we didn't have means of coping with hardships or trying to have means of self-expression, who really knows where a human species would be?